Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. In my previous video, I introduced you to the notion of an interpretation, which is a function that takes the categorimatic letters in our term language and associates them with sets of objects. For instance, if we have a term language that has the terms E, H, and W, we can associate each of these with the sets for E, Elrond, Galadriel, Arwen, and Legolas, for H, Frodo, Sam, Mary, Pippin, and Bilbo, and for W, Gandalf, Radagast, and Saruman. That's all that an interpretation is. With this, we can now plug these together, take different interpretations of different terms, and then find out what the truth conditions for the individual categorimatic propositions are. So when is a categorimatic proposition true on a given interpretation, and when is it false? So let me share my screen. I've got a couple of bits already up there, so there's the whiteboard. Now, intuitively, if we say that all, uh, all y's are x, so that's the form of the categorical proposition x a y, that this is going to be true if, and only if, everything that is y is also x. Similarly, intuitively, an XE claim, a universal negative claim, is going to be true if and only if nothing is both Y and X. The partial affirmative XIY is true if and only if something is both Y and X. And the partial negative XOY is going to be true if and only if something is Y but is not X. So given how we've defined these copula, this is what we want to be able to capture in a formal system. So to show you how we're going to do that, I've got an interpretation up on the, well, my right-hand side of the whiteboard. It's the same one I just said out loud, but I've also added, so we've got something a bit more fun, a new categorimatic term, F, and the interpretation of F is Legolas, Frodo, Sam, Mary, Pippin, and Gandalf. So if you can guess what that is, uh, the mnemonic reason for picking F, member of the fellowship. Now, once we have this intuitive notion of everything that is Y is also X, nothing is Y is X, we want to actually tie this into the sets that we have with our interpretations. So here we have our next formal definition. So, definition, these are the truth conditions for Categorical propositions. Categorical prop. I'm just going to abbreviate that prop. We have four different categorical propositions, and so we're going to have four different uh, conditions, one for each of them. And because the interpretations are expressed in terms of sets, the truth conditions are going to be expressed in terms of relations between sets. So if you haven't watched the set theory in less than 10 minutes video, Pause now, go back, refresh your memory, but I will talk you through each of the symbols that I'm introducing. So we will say that a universal affirmative claim, X, A, Y, is true. And then I'm just gonna use this shorthand abbreviation, I, F, F is shorthand for if and only if. The interpretation of Y is a subset, the interpretation of X. So this subset relation here just says that everything that is in the first set also is in the second set, i.e. everything that is Y is also X. So exactly what we would want it to be. X E Y is then going to be true if and only if, well, we have to take everything that's in Y and then we will take the intersection with everything that's in the interpretation of X. And that has to be empty. So recall intersection is when we take the set of all of the objects that are both in Y and in X. If there is nothing that is in both, then what we have is the empty set. And therefore we have that nothing is both Y and X. Oops. Universal, sorry, partial, Affirmative, X, I, Y, is true if and only if 
the intersection of y and x is not, so the equals with the slash through it is not equals. So if it's not equal to the empty set, this means that there is something that is in both of them. It's not the case that when you take the set of things that are in both, you get nothing, you get something instead. And then we have the partial negative, x, o, y. This is going to be true if and only if the interpretation of y is not a subset of the interpretation of x. So what we have right here, again, putting a slash through something that is relating two sets is just a way of indicating the negation of it. So not a subset of. And that's to say that we have something that is y that isn't also x. So this is just a way of writing down exactly what I have up in the upper corner here in the language of set theory. I haven't changed any of the meaning. However, one thing that should strike you looking at what we have here is a very interesting parallelism. The condition here and the condition here are exactly the same, except that in one we have identity and in the other we have non-identity. And we have something very similar with, ooh, let me see. I'm going to undo that and pick a different color so that you can actually tell the difference. Let's try this lovely green. So, much better. If we compare this condition and this condition, again, they are exactly the same, except that in one, we have subset, and in the other, we have the negation of subset, so not a subset. This is where moving from kind of intuitive ideas about how truth works in English into formal, precise, set theoretic definitions really shows the value of what we are doing when we are kind of building these logics. You wouldn't necessarily have seen this close connection between the types of truth conditions without having this formal representation. We'll come back to this formal representation in a couple of videos. But what I want to do next is go through some examples just to show how can we uh, determine whether something is true given an interpretation. And then later on in other videos, we'll also look at how to build an interpretation in order to make sentences true. But we've got these definitions. We've got this language in the interpretation up on the uh, upper right hand side of, of the whiteboard. Let's just say a few things that follow from this. First, if you look at the interpretation of E and the interpretation of H, there's nothing that's in both of them. So it follows that the interpretation of E, and you take the intersection of that with the interpretation of H, you have the empty set. So on this interpretation, it follows that, yeah. There we go. Uh, e O H is a true sentence. If you look at the interpretation of F and the interpretation of E, you'll see that there is something that is in both F and E, namely Legolas. So it's also going to be the case that F I E is true. Now we can introduce a particular shorthand notation for being able to say that some categorical proposition is true on a given interpretation. So we've got a bit of space down here at the bottom. This is just some notation. Let phi be any categorical well-formed formula and I an interpretation. Now, of course, it's an interpretation for the language that phi is written in, but I'm not gonna say that explicitly every single time. It's a relevant interpretation for the sentence that we have. Then we write I, and then this symbol here is called the double turnstile. So we write, I double turn style phi when the interpretation 
I makes by true. And I bet you can already guess what we will write when the interpretation makes by false. If you said, take the double turn style and put a slash through it, bingo, gold star to you. You're beginning to think like a logician does. So we write this when I makes phi false. Now you might want to say, but you gave me truth conditions. How do I know what the falsity conditions are? Well, because the truth conditions are these if and only if claims, it just has to be make this set theoretic claim false and the corresponding categorical claim will be false. So for instance, if the interpretation of I intersected with the interpretation of X is not the empty set, then X E Y will be false. So these are true sentences on this interpretation, but for instance, this interpretation does not support the claim that F E H. And I will leave it as an exercise to the reader, or in this case viewer, to verify for themselves that that is in fact a false sentence on this interpretation. So next time we will talk about how to construct interpretations to make sentences true, but we will have other opportunities in the future to discuss why and when certain propositions are true given certain interpretations. So see you next time. Cheers.